So welcome to this one more episode in Rumble. I'm your host, Madhav Das. And uh, today we'll be meeting another person from the usual. I've been doing entertainment. Now I'm going to somebody else. So if you were to come home and suddenly you find that somebody rings a doorbell and you go out and you open and you see a doctor standing there. The first thing your heart's going to leap into your mouth and say, what the hell is wrong? Is somebody sick in my family? Is somebody who's called an emergency? So while yes, you need a doctor all your life, you, you will be startled when these people turn up in your life without a plan. But this gentleman here with me, I've called him because we want to talk to him and that's Dr. Raj B. Singh and um, he's uh, a cardio specialist, if I were to say that. Not really, a pulmonary lung pulmonary, specialist. Pulmonary, if you know the difference between that. So I've got Dr. Raj Singh with me, so let's see what we can talk to him about and find out about his experiences as a doctor and as a person living in Chennai. So welcome, Doc. Yeah, thank you very much, Madhav. Thank you for inviting me here today. What can I do for you? Yes. So, uh, as I said, um, I know you are you had something to do with with the heart. Now you say it's pulmonary. So I guess the difference is one of the lungs. The, the lungs. Yeah, there are two lungs and one heart in the middle. You, you specialize in just two lungs or everything else? Well, the respiratory system includes the lungs, but also the nose and the air passage between the nose and the lungs. Mm. So this entire system. And to some extent, there is an involvement of the heart as well, so you're not entirely wrong. Oh, yeah, because the blood goes in, into <clears throat> exactly, the Exactly, yeah. So some effects would be on the heart if there were to be lung diseases. So if, if somebody comes up to you and says, uh, you know, I'm not feeling too well, doc, what would be your first thing? I mean, would you go into your area of specialization and just say, oh, he looks like his lungs are okay? His, uh, so would you be able to spot straight off? Or is that, again, uh, a GP's job, as you used to call it in the old days? Not really. I think it's difficult to distinguish between GP's work and specialist work in India particularly. And I would think that if somebody were to come and say, I'm not feeling well, obviously he would have to be a little more specific and tell me what exactly is the symptom. Sometimes people would come out straight away with a diagnosis and say, you know, I have had asthma for 20 years and I don't think it's really under control. Could you help me? You know, then it becomes a little simpler. Obviously, we'll still have to confirm the diagnosis. but. Um, very often people would say, I've had a cough for, you know, 20 days. Persistent, not going away. Exactly, yeah. So the symptoms and the elaboration of that would constitute a very important component of assessing a person with respiratory disease. So when you get somebody who comes up and says something right at the beginning that, you know, this is what I'm suffering from, would you go and counter check that thing which he is Obviously, himself? yes. You would. It's not that you just take what he says. And no. So would you ever ask, who's your doctor? They would have to provide that information, yes, usually. And uh, would that make a difference to your judgment on uh, what you would treat? Like, like well, is he a well-known doctor, so... Well, if, if he's well-known to me and I know his reputation and this thing, and obviously it makes a difference if I were to know the doctor and he's reputed and he's done a good job. And also the, what he has done and everything will be there with the patient in terms of the investigations done and the prescriptions and so on. So um, it does help if he's already been assessed by uh, a colleague of mine. <clears throat> okay. And uh, when, when, when you recommend somebody, just like somebody recommended uh, a patient to you, you recommend people to others, what would you go by? I mean, is it again, you wouldn't be uh, in a position to judge so many doctors who are available. So what would be your criteria of, uh, of sending somebody somewhere else? Is it his work? Well, first of all, it depends on the kind of uh, disease that you're referring the patient for. Now, if it's just, a, let's say, an allergic rhinitis with asthma, which is a very common disease and not particularly difficult to assess and treat. And in that case, I would look at the doctor's proximity to the patient's oh, home. that makes good sense. Yeah. So I think if he were to come from Assam, for instance, there's no point in referring him to a doctor in Mumbai or Delhi or something. Mm. So I would look for a, patient, uh, for a doctor in Guwahati or, uh, or somewhere near where he lived. Um, if it is a, um, a major lung surgery, a lung operation or something which is very unique, uh, then I would look at the best possible person who can do it. And, suggest that. Is this something that you're taught in, in medical school to, to, to consider things like this or is it just that you picked that up as you went along? Well, this is one among many things you do have to pick up as you mm. continue in your No, practice, because so many it? professional colleges actually don't teach people. I mean, they don't teach an engineer how to be an engineer. Exactly. They, they probably tell him that this is the top end of the, uh, of the T uh, yeah. scale or whatever that thing is called. 
uh, and this is the bottom end. But beyond that, what do you use it for? And, and do you ever need it in your real life? I don't know whether they actually tell them or mm -hmm. how to write a report. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of skills are not imparted at all, except in the higher end colleges. Uh, in medical college, how is it? Do they really keep you abreast of the latest when you come out of college? Well, in medical school, medical colleges, I think you are taught the basis of medicine and if the fundamentals are strong, the, uh, the, the learning of diseases becomes somewhat easier as you progress. But there are many nuances, for instance, how you speak to a patient, how you break bad news, mm. how you would um, That's check critical, the patient up. You know, these are yeah. all things which are not generally taught, but you generally acquire that skill as you continue your practice. Isn't that a consistently difficult uh, thing to do, breaking bad news? Well, it or does, uh, <clears throat> well I think it's, it is acquired to some extent and it does seem to come easier for some doctors than others. There are some doctors who are very sensitive, compassionate and articulate and they're obviously better at doing that job than others. In some exams, for instance, the exam conducted by the Royal College of Physicians in Britain, mm -hmm. uh, they include this as a part of the examination really? process. Yes. It's like an act, um, how would you break the news that... Um, yeah, it might be a real live. patient or it could be an actor or, you know, then they will assess how sensitive you are to what the patient is saying. Does that happen here? Uh, well, we don't have exams on that here, no. No, it, it, it's a practice that all people who have gone to England and got yourself a degree there would have gone through. They would or have had to pass that exam. If they passed also. the exam, they would have had to go through that, yes. And none of them ever thought of coming back here and implementing what is obviously a very good idea. Well, it's not really that easy to implement things in India. I mean, you need to take it right from the top. <laughs> okay. <it? clears throat> but if this is something that doesn't cost any money. The, the administration wouldn't say, no, 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 that's, uh, you know, I've got to buy additional machinery for this. this is no, I mean, it, it means you have to look at the entire curriculum and the way examinations are conducted. And there are boards and you know, very wise people who run all these things and they will have to determine if it's important enough to uh, incorporate that in our own exam system. Mm. That's good. And uh, the, the professors who you learn from uh, in college, are they actual doctors themselves or is it like, you know, uh, teachers need not be the actual ones who do whatever they, they teach. I mean, the mathematics being taught doesn't mean he's a mathematician. So similarly, is, is, is medical college full of teachers or are they actual professional doctors who are just turned teacher? Uh, no, they, they are all professional doctors. You need to have a medical degree to teach medicine. And usually they have postgraduate degrees and special expertise in what they are teaching. And that is uh, by and large the truth throughout the world. And there are very few people who might have specialist uh, interest in let's say they can do an MSc anatomy for instance and they can teach anatomy uh, or physiology. I mean there are some non-clinical um, uh, uh, subjects which they Some can areas do. where you yeah, don't need a yeah, working so, profession. So, can. so um, <clears throat> folks we just come to a little first break in, in this little program. We'll come back and we'll talk some more with uh, Dr. Singh or Dr. Raj B. Singh.